go over some features of Starship, uh, kind of not really advanced features, but you know, kind of a little bit of a deeper dive into some of the things you can do with Starship. Um, you know, I'm going to review our business object interface. That's what I'll be using. Um, so if anyone's unfamiliar with it, um, you'll be able to see that and see how it works. But quickly, the business object interface is just a, a new interface where you can actually do all your shipping right from the Starship software. Um, I don't need access to Sage. My shippers don't have to go into Sage and go into shipping data entry. Uh, they can just ship from the business object interface. Uh, and another thing I'm going to go over is uh, with the business object interface uh, gives you the ability to process a batch of orders and also consolidate multiple orders into one shipping. So we're, we'll review that. And then also jump into how to take advantage of user-defined fields. So if you have user-defined fields set up in Sage, uh, Starship can be mapped to pull information. Uh, if I'm using the BOI interface, we can even change the write back and actually push information from Starship into your user-defined fields. And then also inside Starship now, you can also set up unlimited user-defined fields. So let's show you how we can use some of those to your advantage. And then I'll also pro process an international shipment. I'll do a third party and an LTL shipment. Um, you know, just to kind of see, I find a lot of the clients, they have Starship. They do once in a while do an international shipment or they are shipping third party um, or collect. And they don't use Starship for it. So I just kind of want to review that. And then uh, for those of you that uh, aren't using Starship and you're doing freight or LTL shipments, uh, you know, Starship can also handle that as well. And then we'll jump into kind of quickly showing you how to do a custom shipping document, um, review freight rules and packaging rules as well on packaging scenarios and how to create custom packages. And then, of course, I'll jump in and show you uh, our shipping tools that are included with Starship. Uh, so if you are using Starship, you know, you have access to these shipping tools that I will show you. Um, they are included with Starship, and most of them are easy. If, you're not, if you don't see them, if they're not installed, it's an easy, quick install. Okay. So let me uh, get Starship up here. And actually, let me I'll first go into um, Sage. I'm just going to go into Sales Order Entry here. And the first tool oops, is rate shopping from sales order entry. Uh, this is available with Starship and Sage. Um, it's available for Sage 4.5 all the way through 2016. Um, so if you don't see this button and you're using one of those versions of Sage with Starship, um, let us know and we can uh, you know, get you the links to get this installed. But with the rate quote button, uh, it's going to enable my sales reps or um, customer service reps to actually rate shop right from sales order entry. So at the time they're taking the order, they can go out and rate shop. Now, so I click the rate shop button, get the rate quote screen here. As you can see, my carrier type, carrier and service, that's being all mapped from the ship via. Um, if I click the rate shop button, that's going to just rate shop all the service types for the carrier that's selected. So in this case, it would be FedEx. Um, if I do the actual rate shop button, uh, that's going to go out and rate shop all the carriers that I have modules with uh, for Starship. Uh, so if I have USPS, FedEx, UPS, as you can see, I can actually see all those rates. Uh, if this was an LTL shipment and I had some LTL carriers, I would actually be able to see the LTL. I would be able to see my contract. Uh, the list column here would be zero because LTL carriers do not publish list rates. Um, so from here, again, I can see all the service carrier types. I can see the list or publish rates, my contract, real-time live pricing. And we also have an applied column, which is plus or minus any freight rules. Uh, and that you can be based off the list or contract price. It's up to you. Uh, so I just have a $10 handling fee that goes on top of the list. That way, when customer service quoting freight, they can also take into consider freight rules, you know, maybe add handling fees or maybe even offer, um, you know, free freight over X amount of dollars. Okay. And then also from here, you know, if I had packaging scenarios set up, uh, customer service could see that, you know, that one item went into a custom box. Um, so they could also come in here and change weights. If I had custom packages set up, 
they could select them if they knew how this was going to be packaged. Usually at time of order, you know, customer service is not going to really know how anything shipped out. Um, but again, if I had packaging scenarios, it would automatically package the item. And then they can also do address val uh, validation. Uh, you know, Starship does this at time of shipment, but they can do it ahead of time. Um, you're probably aware Starship validates ZIP plus four. We actually use UPS, USPSs, and FedEx's web services to make sure the address is valid. And this will also automatically correct that residential commercial flag. So I'm going to help save on those address correction fees as well as um, the commercial flag correction fees. Okay. And any changes I make here, you know, may select a different carrier, change the address. Once I click apply, it will write back and update the sales order. So that's just rate quoting from sales order entry. Um, let me jump back into see uh, Starship here. Let me just bring up a new shipment. Okay. Uh, so with the business object interface, again, I'm shipping right from Starship. Um, I can pull source information. I could use sales order numbers, customer numbers, or invoice numbers. Um, if uh, I'll just use sales orders. If my uh, pick sheet had the sales order barcoded, I could scan that, or I can manually type it in, or I can use the lookup feature here. When I use the lookup feature, this is where I can do batch processing. Uh, so as you can see here, I can add a filter if I want, kind of narrow down my search results. But with batch processing, I can select a whole bunch of orders here. I can select them all if I want to, select a couple. And then I can do process selected and get my options here. So this is what I can say ship process, print my labels, what's going to happen on an error on a duplicate. Here's merge related orders. So what this will do, it's just going to combine any orders going to the same company ship to, um, you know, just take them all and consolidate them into one shipment. All right. I show you this. This might not work for everyone if you're currently using the BOI interface. Um, you know, this, this, these steps here works really well if I'm shipping, you know, one item, one box, um, because I'm not going to have the opportunity to do packaging detail. Um, I'm not going to be able to say, oh, I need two boxes. I'm not going to be able to back order any items. You know, it's just going to, once I click OK, it's just going to start giving me all my shipping documents for all the orders I selected. Um, so, you know, best example, I have a client that and some of their items are in Amazon Woo. Um, so, you know, they might get 2,000 orders when Amazon puts on their items on special. Uh, and again, they're going to get these orders. It, they have to ship complete, and they're shipping one to one, um, you know, one item in one box. But if you wanted to, you could actually do load documents. Uh, that would put all the orders I selected into Starship. And then I would have to go through Starship and ship and process each one individually. Kind of showing you that. Um, let me just pull in this order here. Okay, so I'm just going to type in my sales order 222, and we'll start out. This was actually will be an international shipment. So if you do do international shipments, and most clients I have, they do a couple. Uh, but Starship again can make that process a lot easier and automated for you. Um, so here's my shipping information. Uh, Nice thing with Starship uh, and the one-to-many relationships that we can base off the ship via is that I do not need a ship via that's called, you know, in this case, UPS International. Um, this order was just UPS ground, but Starship knows that because it's international to automatically switch to my default service, which is uh, UPS Worldwide Express in this case. Okay. And then most certainly I can use the drop-down and change it. All right, and so with BOI, down here in the packaging view, I'll expand all my items. So here we have all our items from the order. Uh, you know, this item here, it looks like we have a packaging scenario, so it'll automatically put it in my custom box that I have set up. It's called a large box. Nice thing with setting up custom boxes is that it's automatically going to populate those dimensions for my shipper. Okay. You know, if you have your items just all going into a default custom box or loose or loose items and when they come in, you can add packages over here. You know, maybe I want to add a box. Um, 
same thing. I can go under custom packaging. Maybe I want to select my medium box. Um, all these can be set up by clicking the little icon here. Or I can set them up by going under maintain packaging. And this is where I can add boxes, pallets. You can name it, you know, package type. Maybe it's a box, maybe it's a bale. All my different options where I can put the dimensions in. And then, oh, tier weight. Uh, if you're not using a scale, you know, you can include a tier weight. So it will add onto your shipment total. Okay. And then with adding packages, I can simply do my packaging detail by clicking, drag and dropping. I can hold down the shift key and do multiple selection, drag and drop. Um, if you wanted to, you can even click, hold the shift key, or I'm sorry, the control key. And I can actually do split. So I can say uh, for these, I want two to go in this box. Okay. Um, on a side note, the item to box detail is not required. I'm just going to put this back into two boxes here. Um, you know, it is an option. You do not have to. I could have all my items just come into a custom box. Um, I don't have to. If I added a third box here, I don't have to put items in that box. Um, so if you had an order with 100 line items and you didn't want the shipper to go through and kind of package everything, it is not required. Uh, you know, they can just come in, add a box, and just leave it blank. You know, just kind of click on it here and then put the box for using a scale. Just throw the box on the scale. Um, or if you need a bunch of boxes, you can use our repeat box function. So here's where I can say, you know, repeat this one box. You know, if I needed 12, X amount of times for a total of 12 boxes. So again, that item to box detail is not required. But if you have smaller orders, it's nice to take advantage. Okay. Again, with this being an international shipment, here's my international data. So I just clicked on the line item detail here. So over here, if I click on this little icon, this is where I can store all the required information for my international shipments. Schedule B code, I can look them up by code or by description. I'll make my selection. I'm using a certificate of origin if I have to, I can set that up. You know, EEI, all this required information. Easily can set up, I click OK. And then when I ship and process this order, uh, that international information will be stored for this item for the next time I ship it. So I really just have to do it once. Okay. And then also with BOI, uh, you know, if you don't like the packaging view, I can also package by using our shipping assistant wizard. I so click the little uh, icon up here, the little wand. Um, so that's going to give me my first screen. It's just basically the order information, breakdown of the order. Uh, here's on, over on the left-hand side is related orders. So this is where I can consolidate. So I could select and bring up all the orders or a couple of them. I can even manually add orders. But again, anything I bring and drag together, it's going to consolidate it into just one shipment. My next screen, this is where I can do my units on shipment, back order items. With BOI, it will automatically create the invoice inside of Sage. And if I did back order an item, it will back order the invoice as well as the sales order. Okay. And then on the next screen, this is where I can do my packaging if I wanted to. Um, you know, you can have your items come in as loose items. They'd be up here, as you can see. And then I can, same thing, just drag and drop. I can add boxes down below and remove boxes. And if I needed to split, you know, I could do split shipments here. If I needed two of these items, one in a box, I could do that. Uh, this was an LTL shipment. I could click Next, and then that would be my box to pallet. So it would be the same thing, but up here would be the boxes and down below would be pallets. Okay. Click Finish. It's going to bring me back to Starship. And from there, same functionality. I can rate shop if I need to. I can click the little icon, green dollar icon, or I can go to the rate shop tab. Rate shop from there. Also with Starship, if you're not using and unaware, you can also set up uh, carrier rules. Uh, so you could actually have a 
uh, maybe a ship via called Best Way, and then set up a rule and have Starship automatically select the carrier based off your rule, uh, maybe least expensive or maybe you know uh, fastest delivery time. Uh, a lot of different options there. So you could have Starship automatically kind of go through this rate and pick the carrier based off your rule. I'm just going to go to the charges tab so we can kind of show freight rules. Um, so here's a breakdown. I do have a freight rule set up on this order. Um, and it is using a user defined field that I set up inside of customer maintenance in Sage. Uh, it's just a checkbox. I named it freight discount. And because it's selected, this customer automatically receives a 25% discount on freight. Okay. Freight rules just be set up under setup. Freight rules, my freight rules. Okay. First screen, just kind of the options. Do I want to set applied charges against contract or list or zero? All right. But under define freight rules, this is where I can add my rules, edit them. Um, and with freight rules, you know, you can do, um, you know, here's a percentage. Um, I can even do by line items. Um, you know, maybe you have a item one, two, three that's oversized. You want to add twenty dollars handling fee anytime it's on an order. You can create a freight rule that does that. Uh, here's that twenty-five percent discount just from using a UDF field. Uh, so a lot, a lot of different options: min maxes, you know, flat amounts, percentages, um, and the conditions you can set up. A lot of different options for those freight rules. Okay. Cancel out of here. All right. So now when I'm ready to, you know, same process as you're probably used to. I'm just going to ship and process when my order's ready. Get my shipping documents. You know, these will just preview for the sake of the demo, but as you know, they just automatically can go to the um, printer. Uh, so here's our smart label. Uh, smart label is just the shipping label and the packaging list that prints together on an 8.5 by 11 piece of paper. I use this, this is just a virtual machine, so I don't have a uh, thermal printer set up. Uh, but you could send the shipping label to a thermal printer. Um, and now you can also send the packaging list to a thermal printer as well. Okay. And just a, that's a, that first label there is just a UPS laser label. And then my second smart label. Get my commercial invoice because this is international, so I have that turned on. Um, order header line item detail automatically going to populate on the form for you. I have customized this by adding the signature and date. Okay. So I really set this form up so you know, once it prints out, I can just grab it and use it. And then my NAFTA form if I needed one. Same thing, order header line item detail automatically going to populate for me customize it, put a logo on there, and then kind of these fields down below automatically going to populate by customizing the form. I added the signature, name, date, you know, company. It's the same on pretty much all the forms. You know, each form you can set up different templates. Um, you know, maybe the uh, customer ABC needs a commercial invoice to look a certain way. You know, you can set up a template for customer ABC. And then on that template also set up a printing rule or a condition that says, Hey, only use this form when the order is for customer ABC. Okay, and then I'll show you uh, where you can do all the forms um, simply by going under setup, printing. So that's where I can manage my labels. That's where I can enable turn off labels. Manage documents, same thing. I can enable them, turn them off. Um, in here is where um, just pick a pick one here this is where I can do my conditions. So if I enable this again, like I said, maybe I just want this to go to only certain customers. Um, this is where I can build my conditions. Okay. Let's just either under manage labels or documents is where I can do the conditions. And then if I actually wanted to customize a form. I can go to Manage Templates. You can see here I have all the templates listed. Uh, the yellow lock, that means I cannot override the original document. Um, so if I open one that was locked, it would make me save any changes. 
And that way, you know, if someone was in here playing around, they're not going to override the original. And I can easily just click on it. So this is uh, this is the smart label, but really kind of everything works the same. It's really just right clicking. I can insert tasks. If I wanted to pull in Starship data, you know, barcode, image. Um, you know, if I wanted Starship data, very simple. You know, what information do I want to put in? Order, you know, maybe origin city. Got all these options. So in pretty much any Starship field, I can find and easily add to my forms. Okay. So really the template designer is very user friendly and like I said it's going to make you um, save if you're using an original one so you're not going to screw anything up. Okay. Get out of there. All right. Okay, so let me now that I ship that one order, um, like I said with BOI it will automatically create the invoice inside of Sage. So now if I go back into Sage, go into Invoice Data Entry, I'll go to my last invoice here. As you can see here, this is the order we just shipped, or 222. You know, tracking information, writing that back. All that information's in there. And of course on the Totals tab, writing back freight. Um, this is actually contract charge, kind of another example of some things you can do with BOI and that custom write back. Um, I had some clients that they wanted to always keep track of contract charges. Uh, so you could create a UDF, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to print on the invoice, but we could also change it and have it always push, have Starship always push your contract or maybe list pricing back. And that we can run reports from Sage to actually, you know, keep track of your freight amounts, kind of an applied versus contract. We do have the, the standard report like that in the dashboard, and I'll show you that in a little bit. Uh, some clients just feel, you know, it's easier to just have all that information inside Sage where they can just run reports from Sage. Um, so again, you know, we can push information back into contract charges and most certainly pull information from contract charges. Um, so with that being said, I'm just going to pull in a third-party shipment here. Uh, just going to type in that sales order number here. Okay, on my shipping tab, I haven't touched anything, and as you can see, automatically chose my carrier, service, billing type, my customer's information, as well as their account number. Okay, Starship can handle this a couple different ways. Uh, again, with using a UDF field, I'm just going to go to the additional tab. I'm just in here, customer maintenance. Bigger so you can see it. Move this over. Okay. So I just have some UDF fields. You know, here's that freight discount that I was showing you for that freight rule. Uh, I have one for shipping account number, and then down here I have a third party shipping ID. So the way this third party one worked, uh, the way I have mine set up, is I just have a ship via that's a UPS ground third party. So it's automatically selected my carrier service, change the billing type to third party. I'm using Starship's internal database where I can set up my third-party account information. Okay, I'm just going to cancel that. You can do that by clicking again, same little blue icon. Nice thing with that, you know, I can add all the customer's information. If I, they had multiple carriers, I can also include multiple carrier account numbers. You know, so if they did have UPS and FedEx, um, you, know, you could store all those. Okay, so the way mine's set up, I just have this this field here, which is the third party name. It's looking at the recipient, the top line of the recipient address. So that's how it's automatically being selected. Again, with UDF fields and how we can change the mappings and pull data from user defined fields, I could even just have the account number being grabbed from a UDF here, or I can use our third party address database. And as you can see here, I could set it up so it looks at this third-party shipping ID, and it's automatically going to select ABF, and from there automatically populate the account number. So a lot of different options. You know, I know I'm going over a lot. Feel free to contact me if you have any questions with this. I can you know go over it again and review. Um, okay. 
again, just different options on how to use UDF fields and setting up Starship to automate your shipping processes. Okay. So really for a third party, you know, if I can set this up. I'm going to scan, type in, or look up that sales order number, maybe do my packaging scenario, my item to box detail, add some boxes, and then I'm ready to ship and process. Uh, you know, no more looking at the pick sheet. Maybe if there's a comment line that says, hey, ship on customers, UPS account, and with the account number, you know, hopefully help save those shippers that might accidentally, you know, fat finger a number or put in the wrong numbers here. Uh, just automate that whole process, uh, just making your whole shipment process smooth and easy. Um, you know, another example of doing third party, again, with those mappings, you know, if you didn't want to have a UDF on the customer maintenance, uh, you know, you can add that field in, in, uh, on the sales order. You know, you can even use standard Sage fields if you're not using the comment line. We can change the mapping to pull account numbers from there or maybe the FOB field. You know, maybe you want to add a UDF field that's a drop-down that lists the customer's accounts. So that way when the customer service rep's taking the order, oh, you want this on UPS you know, X123, they can click the drop-down and select that. And then when the shipper brings it in, you know, it's automatically going to populate that information. Okay. And then let me just pull, like I said, I'll do a LTL shipment here, kind of show you how it works um, if you're not using LTL. A uh, nice thing with the LTLs, all your freight carriers, uh, we have modules with over two dozen LTL carriers. Um, nice thing with those modules is when I'm doing electronic rate shopping, I would be able to pull in my contract rates. Um, you know, I don't have to go to the website of the carrier or call them and say, hey, how much is it going to cost to do this shipment? Um, you know, I can easily, I only have two set up in my system, but as you can see, I can see XPO, which was Conway um, in Old Dominion. But if any carrier module that I had, I'd be able to see. Um, if you happen to use Freight Quote, uh, which is a service, a 3PL service that goes out, shows you basically thousands of LTL carriers uh, and you use their rates. Uh, we do have an integration with that so I could see you know, tons of LTL carriers if I wanted to. Uh, but say in this case I only really use XPO and Old Dominion. Nice thing is I can see delivery date, charges. Um, with this it will also support any electronic feature the carrier may offer. So uh, pretty much all of them do electronic pickup. So as soon as I ship and process this order it will notify the carrier that I have a shipment ready. Again, I'm saving another call or another you know, visit to their website to say, hey, I uh, have something ready, come pick it up. Um, but for my LTL, I kind of earlier was talking about how you can have items come in as loose items. Uh, as you can see here, my freight mode is just set up to automatically have my items come in as loose. And then I just build the boxes and build my pallet. So I'm just going to use the packaging view. I'll add two boxes here. And let me grab these two. Maybe they go in here. And then I'll grab the remaining loose items, put them in there. Okay, so quickly, easily built my two boxes. You know, maybe I'm using a custom pallet. Maybe it's my 48 by 48. Okay, and then maybe, you know, again, if I wanted to put this, uh, maybe this goes in a medium box goes in a large box, a large sheet. Nice thing, again, all my dimensions are going to be populated for my, um, you know, really set this up, ready to go. And I can rate shop if I wanted to, or just ship and process. Okay. And with XPO or Conway, um, they also support uh, electronically emailing their BOL form. Uh, my email is actually turned off, but if I had it on, you would see they would just sent me an email of the bill, their bill lading form. You can most certainly use Starship's bill lading form. You know, we have Uniform Straight and the VIC. But again, order header, line item detail. It's all being populated automatically for me. And then I customize my form to kind of you know, fill out this information. Just saving time again. Okay. And then ship and process, and I'm ready to go on to my next shipment. 
And I'll jump into now those shipping tools that I was kind of briefly went over. Uh, so let me open up. First one I'm going to go over is eNotify. Again, you know, you have access to this. If you're using Starship, eNotify is included. Uh, so let me just go to my pending. Uh, this is our eNotify viewer. So this is where I can view all my emails. With eNotify, I can create custom templates. You know, easily add company logo. Nice thing, you know, build your brand awareness. If you're using like the UPS Quantum View, really kind of just says UPS, UPS. Uh, nice thing with this, you know, you can put your company logo on it. Uh, these are very easily easy to design. Uh, it's same thing, kind of like when I'm showing the custom forms. It's right clicking. Okay, do you want to add an image? Do you want to add a, a Starship field, a Sage field? Okay, what field do you want to add? Uh, but with these, as you can see, I can pull in Sage field, PO number, sales order number, you know, let my customer know how my order was shipped, where it's going to. I can give them the package breakdown. You know, box one is these two items, box two is these two. Um, estimated delivery is coming from the carrier, so it is accurate. Tracking numbers, they are hyperlinked. So it's going to help reduce those inbound calls of, hey, where's my package? Uh, also with these templates, uh, you know, same thing, I put conditions on them. You know, here I have a 20% off coupon. Maybe I only want that to go to certain customers. I can create a condition on that template. So this coupon code template only goes to certain customers. Um, I can hyperlink the coupon code, get them right back to my website. Okay. These can be set up to go at time of shipment. So as soon as my shipper hit click ship and process inside Starship, you can delay them by a certain number of hours and or minutes. You can send them all at the end of the day in one batch. Um, you can even send them right from the email viewer here. Okay. I can select them, I can forward, delete, send. Okay. Nice the option of this, I like it, it, there's a failed. So if there's any email that is, you know, address that is bad, you will see that. And speaking of email addresses, the two CCBCC, uh, we can pull from Sage, so from customer maintenance, uh, from sales order, from the sales rep. There's a spot inside of Sage if you have sales reps set up for their email addresses. We can even pull if you had a UDF field and maybe you need the um, email to go to, say, five different customers or five different email addresses. You know, Sage just gives you the one. Here, you know, you can add as many as you'd like. And all we do on that template is just link that UDF field, oops, into there, and it will pull all the emails in that UDF field. Okay. A lot of different options there. Um, one thing I do recommend if you use eNotify or if you're currently using it, you can still use the carrier generated emails. Um, let's go to parcel here. You know, if I am just pulling an order, just kind of show you one uh, one suggestion uh, with the carrier generated. I'll just do the quantum view here on this order. Um, but one thing we can do is set up Starship to automatically select the quantum view email in this case. Okay, so I can select quantum view. What we can do is have it, you know, same thing. Tell it which email addresses to pull in. But set this up, I recommend to just do exceptions. Uh, so your customer is going to get the email notify that you've created, letting them know, hey, your package is on its way. And then they'll get this email, in this case from UPS, if there's any delay. Um, again, just another way to help cut down those inbound calls of, you know, hey, my package was supposed to be here. Where is it? Um, you know, customer can always be up, up to date. I mean, all these options, ship is at time of shipment. You know, they can get an email when it's been delivered or an email when it gets, you know, transit. So anytime it hits a hub, uh, customers can get an email. But this whole process, you know, we can automatically select those uh, if you still wanted to use both. Okay. All right. And now I'm just going to show you a dashboard here. Okay. So dashboard is kind of a local web-based program. Uh, same thing. This can be installed on as many workstations as you'd like. You know, eNotify, Dashboard does not take up any other seats or licenses for Starship. Um, you know, Dashboard doesn't require Starship or Sage to be on the same machine. You know, what Dashboard's doing is just accessing SQL's, uh, Starship's SQL database. 
and just pulling information. Um, so we have some performance indicators, you know, if you want quick access to like maybe your top five customers. Uh, this is by shipment. In Starship, you can set up different users with different security features. So maybe you want to quickly see who's shipping what. Um, shipment by carrier, you know, maybe you want to negotiate better rates, you know, at quick access to, you know, who you're shipping the most with. And nice thing with these little widgets, I can click on, say, this bar graph here for ABF and actually see the eight shipments that make up AB, their um, account. And then I can even double click on the shipment detail and actually get the kind of the line or drill down detail. If I had a track from dashboard, I'd be at this same screen here. So I would have access to the shipping date, estimated delivery date, you know, status. Or maybe it's been delivered and my customer calls and says, hey, I was missing an item. You know, this box only had, you know, item one in it. Well, I can go on my line item tab and say, no, there was, you know, two items in there. Um, so you can give them item to box breakdown. You can see information all the way down the proof of delivery if the uh, carrier uh, supports it and it was required, you could actually see the signature. You can just click on that and I would see the signature of who signed for the package. Okay. Um, you know, history status reports, a bunch of CAN reports here. Uh, a couple I recommend, late delivery report. Uh, this report you can run, it's going to compare the guaranteed delivery date to the actual delivery date. going to let you know of any package that wasn't delivered on time. So you can contact your carrier and try to get a refund. And then our charge comparison reports, uh, we have applied versus contract. I kind of mentioned this earlier when I was talking about that um, contract UDF field. Um, so you can run this report. What this report will do is go out, it's going to show you all your orders. We put the sales order number in there for you. Uh, but it's going to show you applied. So that's what you charge the customer for shipping for your shipment. And it's going to compare it to your contract. So that's what you're being charged by the carrier. I'm uh, going to give you the breakdown, you know, show you plus or minus. going to show you if you're losing money. Again, we have that sales order number, so you can go back inside of Sage and look at the order, kind of find out what happened, why you lost money. Um, um, and again, you know, options, I can do date options for this report. I can do it my, for my freight or parcel. Um, you can even do it by certain carriers and all the way down by certain account numbers. And if I had multiple locations, I could do it by location. Okay, I'm going to run this report again. It's going to show me applied versus contract. Uh, we have list versus contract, so you make sure you kind of keep track, see if you're getting a good deal from your carriers. Uh, and again, shipment by users, uh, basically all my late deliveries, let's see my daily shipments. Um, really, that, you know, dashboard's giving that kind of all that warehouse shipping detail information. It's putting in the, in the hands of the front office or management. You know, they don't have to contact the warehouse and say, hey, did this ship or, hey, what did you ship? You know, they can just have this on their machine and, um, you know, get all that information. Also, from here, you can do the rate quote. Uh, we also have rate quote as a standalone module. Let me kind of close all these screens here. Um, so, as you can see, I have rate quote. Um, rate quote is a standalone. Again, it's going to go out, do the same thing. The only downside of using it as a standalone is you have to manually fill out the, uh, you know, shipping address and, um, you know, selecting the carrier. When it's coming from sales order entry, all that information is automatically populated for you because it's just pulling it from the sales order. Uh, but you do have the option of using it as a standalone. You know, clients that do that usually they just type in the zip code. Um, and then click rate shop, um, maybe add items, um, but it is an option that is available just to do it on a standalone. All right, and you know, let me make sure we covered everything here. I think we did. We got the business object interface, get batch processing, UDF fields, uh, third party, uh, freight rules, packages. Um, yeah, so I think we basically I covered everything I wanted to. Leave some time for questions if there's any questions. Uh, so thank you, Matt. Awesome yeah. job. Oh, thank you.
I'd like to um, launch a couple polls, if I may, for the audience while you're thinking of your questions. And just want to remind you all that uh, there's a hand right next to your name on the webinar pane and a question mark. If you should have any questions, go ahead and click on that question mark, and we will announce the question for Matt. So our first poll is... If you're a Starship user, how would you rate your experience with Starship? If you could uh, go ahead and answer that poll for us, that would be awesome. Take a couple minutes. and um, So, Matt, um, there's yeah. been some um, changes with U USPS um, postal rates. Can you um, talk a little bit about that? Sure. Um, so yeah, with the USPS postal rates, um, you know, with our if you're currently not using our USPS module, um, with our module you do gain access to some uh, discounted USPS rates. Um, originally, we did offer uh, customer priority rating. Uh, so basically it was rates reserved for high volume shippers with no minimum requirement. Um, but UPS has just made some changes to their rates so they are comparable to our CPP rates. Um, and it, it's going to depend on um, where you're shipping, which zone, weight, um, but you do will do, you know, yeah if I can speak, you will still save with our USPS module. Um, also, with uh, priority shipments, um, you, we do offer some additional discount rates. Um, but yeah, so they just made their changes, kind of lessened all their prices, basically took that CPP pricing and kind of opened it up. Um, but again, with our module, you will still you know, gain some savings over the list pricing that uh, USPS offers. And I have one more poll to ask, but I do see... 71% of you have voted for this one, so if we could uh, just get the whole entire audience to vote, that would be great. 71% going once, <laughs> going twice, 86%. Yay, I love it when the needle moves. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so we're at 86%. I'm going to go ahead and close that poll because I have one more to ask. And if we could just get you to answer this question too, what interfa interface are you currently using? The business object interface or the Starship link? And we're at 67%. Can we yeah, get higher? And with those interfaces, one thing I did forget to mention, you can you know, use both. Um, it is based off the shipper when they log in on which interface. So I do have some clients that have shippers using Link, and then you know some of their other shippers are using the business object interface. Um, so you are not limited to one or the other. You can run both. Yeah, it looks like we've got 83% voted. And I'm going to go ahead and close out that poll. And... See if we have any more questions. I'm not seeing any questions. Mm -hmm. and we'll hang out here for just a little bit longer and see if anybody uh, has a question. Yeah, that's, that's a great presentation, Matt. You yeah, obviously you. know your stuff. I try. It's hard to keep up. up. It's hard to keep up on all the news in the uh, uh, shipping industry. Yeah, it's always changing. <laughs> and you can save so much money in shipping. Yes. Yep. With the rates and you know just automating your whole shipping process with Starship just it helps so much. And you know another thing I just can remind you guys, um, you know please feel free have your shippers either you know have a uh, pad and pencil next to their shipping station or you know have a word doc excel doc but have them take note of anything that they may you know always be manually typing in or a step they're manually doing with starship 
um, and definitely reach out, let me know, because uh, nine times out of ten, it's something we can't automate. Again, changing mappings, just changing the default settings. Um, you know, please feel free to reach out and let us know. And just to let everybody know, this will be published on our YouTube channel, and we'll um, send you a follow-up email with the recording so that you can have that if you need to reference it. And Matt's contact information will um, accompany the email. Um, so if there's no more questions, you did get a great job, Matt. Thank I, you from yeah. Bruce. Yes, yeah, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for taking time to attend. So perfect. We will uh, all be in touch with you guys and have a fantastic rest of your day. All right. Thank you, everyone. Have a good one. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.